What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the VGC 2020 Series 6 tier list. Now, the thing about VGC 2020 Series 6 is that um, they didn't add any new Pokemon, they only actually removed Pokemon, uh, but the very fact of removing 16 major players within the metagame uh, literally shifts everything either pretty far up or pretty far down. So that's what this tier list is gonna be. Shout out to everyone on Twitch who subscribed to the channel. Uh, this was actually a sub goal uh, for the channel. So basically if I reached uh, the amount of subs I wanted, then uh, I would go ahead and do the series six tier list. So shout out to all of you guys. Also, I go live on Twitch every Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. CST. So if you guys wanna check it out, uh, that will be in the description down below. But yeah, if you guys want to do me a favor, uh, let's try to shoot for 200 likes on this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, join the Discord, and let's get into it. Okay, so the way we're going to be ranking these things are in standard tiers. S, A, B, C, D, F, and Nanade. Nanade meaning they got banned. Now, I, I want to clarify something before we get into this video. Um, a lot of people will get very defensive on tier list videos. They'll be like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean Sandslash isn't S tier? I made it to Master Ball tier with Sandslash. Clearly it's S tier. Uh, the thing about ranking Pokemon on a tier list is that it's a combination of three things. It is one, consistency, as in they can do well on many teams and it's not one particular team that it does okay on. Um, power, which means they hit like a truck and or are like the best at their role. They're the best defensive Pokemon, they're the best offensive Pokemon, they're the best tailwind setter, something like that. Like that that's power. Um, or, and, and opinion. Opinion is something that is a major factor in tier list videos. So while my opinion may vary from yours, um, I feel like I have enough experience within this game and in this format uh, where I can make a couple of um, maybe maybe some hot takes, a couple of cold takes. Like I'll be able to probably get things around the same area that uh, many other players would rank Pokemon. Uh, on top of that, we are at literally the beginning of this metagame. Like, we just got into this metagame, so uh, for all I know, I could be completely wrong about a Pokemon. Some new tech could be discovered, uh, and yeah, like, it, it, things are going to progress. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, first off, we have, we have a lot of Pokemon here. We have a lot of Pokemon. So, I, if you see me skip through a couple, that's because, like, they're just not that good. And, and they're probably, like, average. So... S tier is what I would consider to be absolutely busted, almost essential, not essential for like every team, but they, they are like one of the best Pokemon, one of the most consistent. You will get far using this Pokemon. A is like, they're solid. They, they work. They're very, very good in the metagame. Uh, they're very common in the metagame. You will see them on a lot of teams and they hit really hard. B would be like, they're, they're just below that. You can see them on a couple of teams. Uh, they do their job well. They might not be the best at their job, but they fill one particular niche pretty okay. C means like, okay, they're, they're kind of iffy. They might not be amazing, but they're also not like just okay. Uh, D is how, where I kind of put most Pokemon. D tier Pokemon are like, they aren't completely out of the question to find success with. Like you can use Gigantamax Butterfree uh, and have success with it. However, it's it's probably not that good, but you could find success with it. So that's D and F is where I'm like, you might find success. I'm pretty certain you're not. This Pokemon's garbage. <laughs> and again, Nanade is banned. So uh, with how I sort of think of the tiers out of the way, let's, let's go ahead and start. So first off, Venusaur, rest in peace, you have been banned. Uh, off to Nene tier. <laughs> now, if I, I'm only really going to be ranking the Gigantamax. I don't see a point in ranking the Dynamax and the Gigantamax separately, unless they like have a huge difference between them. Uh, next up is Charizard. Now, I feel like Charizard is a solid A tier right now, while Sun did take a huge hit uh, because of losing Torkoal. Uh, and like Torkoal is like one of its best Trick Room answers. Like, yeah, you could go for a Trick Room and start sporing things with a Moongus or something. Uh, but my Torkoal underspeeds you and it's going to absolutely decimate anything under Trick Room. Uh, it did lose that. It, like Sun now really only has a fast mode since you have to run Ninetales for Auto Sun or possibly like a Sableye or Klefki to set up Sunny Day. Um, I, I could see Sun, I, like I could see, I could see Charizard performing consistently well however i don't see it uh like an s tier like I, I previously would have put him in s tier in like series um three or maybe even series five but right now it's it's a solid a tier next up blastoise uh i want to put blastoise in b tier it's got the same effect as charizard where all non well 
for Charizard, it's fire types, but all non-water types take like a sixth of their health bar every single turn. Like those cannot be overlooked. They're very powerful. Um, now that we've lost Rillaboom, like there, are, there aren't many things that actually check Blastoise very well. The fact that we got Gigantamax Blastoise at the same time we got uh, Grassy Surge, Gigantamax, Rillaboom, uh, was kind of a shame because it makes it much more difficult to try to use Blastoise. But since he's gone, Gigantamax Blastoise, like bottom of A tier, top of B tier is about where I'd put it. Now Butterfree, that's that's D tier. One, like that was the perfect example. It's a Pokemon that you could find success with. It's got Rage Powder. It's got Sleep Powder with um, Compound Eyes. It can go for Tailwinds, Hurricanes, Max Airstreams. It's it's a good Pokemon on certain teams. But as far as like the Gigantamax goes, it's it's probably just, you, you could use it. it. You could use it, it's probably not ideal. Pikachu, once again, another not ideal Pokemon. Gigantamax Pikachu actually has a really, really terrifying max move. Guaranteed paralysis on everything on the field, um, including ground types, as long as you target a non-ground type with your max move. Uh, and with the light ball, it hits like an absolute truck. For reference, it has like about the same as Mega Alakazam did, like the same special attack stat, so that's really disgusting. Now, Alolan Raichu got a buff in that other terrains aren't quite as common since we lost Ndidi and uh, Gigantamax Rillaboom. Um, so, Electric Terrain is like one of two terrains that we can still set up automatically, being uh, Misty and Electric uh, with Pinkurchin and Galarian Weezing, respectively. So, Rising Voltage is really cool. I'm going to have to put it in... I want to say C tier. It could be really, really scary. It depends how the metagame shapes up. Um, the only thing is it's a very frail Pokemon. You could Dynamax it. However, you get the most bang for your buck by like just going for Rising Voltage, in my opinion. I'm not certain where this thing will end up falling um, in the metagame, but I feel like it's a solid C tier Pokemon. We have already filled out almost every tier. We have two tiers left to fill out with the Pokemon, which usually takes me a while. Regular Raichu, the Lightning Rod's actually pretty good. I would have to put it in B tier, mainly because I feel like just the support it provides is really solid. Fake Out, Lightning Rod, Nuzzle, uh, Volt Switch, all those are really solid options. It's a decent support Pokemon. And while we don't have too many Electric types running around, as you can see, like I can maybe point out a couple of them and most of them are Rotom. Um, it, it is a nice support Pokemon to have on a team occasionally if you are carrying a very Electric weak Pokemon, like a Rain team. Next up, uh, Sand Slash. The Sand Slashes, uh, they're gonna end up in D tier. While they both have like a Rush ability, being Slush Rush and Sand Rush, uh, respectively, I, I just don't see them being too amazing in this meta game. Uh, we have better Sand Abusers. Hail has never been all that viable. However, I could see Hail maybe come to fruition once we get like Slush Rush on Arctivish and uh, Arctazolt. Uh, however, we don't have them quite yet, so to D tier they go. The Clefable. I, I, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, usually there's a Clefairy here. Just Clefable, it's going to be like a B tier redirection Pokemon. Uh, keep in mind, Clefairy is A tier. A Clefairy is absolutely A tier. Um, it's probably the best redirection Pokemon in the metagame. Uh, with Friend Guard, it's really, really nice because you're able to uh, cut the damage on your ally Pokemon. So Clefable B tier, Clefairy A tier. Just pretend there's a Clefairy there. Uh, Alola Ninetales, I'm going to put it as a solid C tier. Uh, I don't see it being amazing, however, it has a really good speed tier now that, um, like, we lost... What's that Pokemon's name? Cinderace. We lost Cinderace, so uh, it's now one of the fastest Pokemon in the metagame. It speed ties with Durant, which is kind of scary. I wish it was a little bit faster. If it was base 110, it would 100% be, like, B tier, in my opinion. But being a speed tie with Durant is pretty iffy. Regular Ninetales, uh, I'm gonna put that in B tier. It's now our best Sunsetter because it's our only Sunsetter, which is kind of a shame, uh, but I think it's an okay Pokemon. Like, you know, it just goes for Heat Waves, sets up Drought, it's it's all right. Vileplume, I'll put in C tier. Um, it's kind of lame when you compare it to Lilligant. It is able to go for max ooze and stuff, uh, and it's a slower, bulkier Sleep Powder Spammer under Chlorophyll, but it's it's just okay. You know, it, it can work. Strength Sap is pretty cool. I could see people using it. The Doug Trios probably belong in D tier. I, I don't see them really doing much. You could trap something with a uh, regular Doug Trio. Although in Doug Trio, going for like Sand Force moves is probably pretty difficult to switch in on, but it's not amazing. Uh, Gigantamax Meowth. I am sorry, you are F tier. You're absolute garbage. I don't even have to explain that one. Uh, Alolan Persian. I want to put it in B tier. 
basically Alolan Persian is one of our best support Pokemons right now. Uh, it gets Snarl, Fake Out, Foul Play, Icy Wind. It can even set up Sunny Day for the Charizard. Like I have lost to Sunny Day, Alolan Persian next to Charizard because it's a very threatening combination. Like just that speed tier, I believe it's like 115, somewhere around there. It's, it's a very high speed tier uh, for this metagame. So it's honestly a really solid Pokemon. Regular Persian, I'm gonna have to put it in D tier. I mean, yeah, it's fast. That's about it. It's just a fast normal type. Golduck, I want to put in... It's somewhere between C and D tier. I want to put it in C tier just because it's able to abuse rain, but it's not the ideal rain abuser. Um, it could be scary, but Swift Swim, like Swift Swim Golduck, that's a VGC 17 strat. We have better Pokemon now. I'm going to go ahead and put Poliwhirl in the same tier because it's probably just better Golduck, physical attacker, max knuckle. They could honestly go to D tier. I, I feel like they could go either way. Like this is bottom of C tier or high of high D tier. So uh, next up Arcanine, I'm going to go ahead and put Arcanine as another A tier. I feel like Arcanine is super, super solid. One of the best support Pokemon that we have ever seen. Now that Incineroar is gone, this thing gets Safeguard, Heat Wave, Will-O-Wisp, um, Intimidate is phenomenal. It's, it's such a good Pokemon. It's very hard not to put it on your team. I feel like I can't praise Arcanine enough, to be honest. Um, next up, we have this Alakazam. Alakazam, solid D tier. Before, it probably would have been maybe C or B tier. Uh, however, with the loss of Ndidi, this thing is pretty underwhelming. Gigantamax Machamp, I'm going to have to put this thing in D tier. It's very difficult to justify when we have uh, such powerful Pokemon like um, this Charizard running around. You know, I could make a case for C tier, now that I think about it. With Lapras running around, Lapras is one of the best Pokemon right now. Um, like, the critical hit chance is really nice. I mean, G-Max Cheese Strike is kind of a lame move, but the critical hits are pretty cool. So I guess it's alright. Tentacruel. I will have to put Tentacruel in probably C tier. The most it can really do is like some Acid Spray shenanigans. It's just okay. Maybe D tier. I, I want to put it... I want to put it in D tier, actually. It's kind of lame. <laughs> it's kind of a lame Pokemon. Uh, Galarian Rapidash, you are F tier. Regular Rapidash, you are D tier. The reason Galarian Rapidash is so bad is because it just it just gets no good moves, man. Like, if this thing had, like, maybe just a little bit higher attack, a little bit higher speed, one or the other would have been good. Rapidash is just good because it gets, like, Will-O-Wisp and Flare Blitz, and it hits hard with those moves. But besides that, it's, it's super bad. Uh, the slow bros. I'm gonna go ahead and put both slow bros in C tier. Maybe the slow bro can be in B tier. Um, they're they're good trick room setters. They aren't the best ones, but they work. You know, um, th they kind of function exactly the same, except with uh, Galarian slow bro being a bit more offensive. I personally feel that um, regular slow bro is a little bit better, just because um, Scald stab Scald is really nice. Uh, besides that, I mean, you can go either way with these Pokemon. Next up is Cloyster. I want to put Cloyster as like a D tier Pokemon. You're really only going to see this thing shell smash and nothing else. It will probably, and probably not even get the shell smash off. It's a very risky Pokemon. Now, I think that Gengar actually belongs in B tier right now. Uh, and the main reason being it's immune to, <laughs> it's immune to Porygon Z, which is actually probably one of the most metafining Pokemon the, at the moment. Um, and it's able to trap Pokemon, which is really nice. The speed tier got so much better now that uh, we lost Cinderace and Dragapult. Uh, it's like our fastest ghost type, I believe. I might be wrong, but I believe it's the fastest ghost type now, uh, which is a very, very nice niche to have. You're able to go for support moves like Will-O-Wisp, Icy Wind. Um, you could even go for Trick Room. I've seen a lot of fast Trick Room Gengar just because like, you know, you run the Focus Sash. Uh, people expect you to go for an attack. Uh, you just end up going for the Trick Room when people least expect it. It's a very nice Pokemon in that sense. Next up, we have Gigantamax Kingler. I feel like Kingler is probably C tier. The speed control is very nice. Don't get me wrong. The speed control is very nice, but I mean, it's it hits hard, but it's very difficult to justify in this metagame. Like, it doesn't hit anything in particular. Um, and Lapras kind of outclasses it, while, while Lapras is like a completely different Pokemon. Just as a water type, I would pretty much take Lapras any any day of the week. <laughs> um, it's very hard to compare them though, because you know one's special attacker, one's a physical attacker, one's bulky, one isn't. But I don't know. It's very difficult to justify using a Pokemon with base 75 speed that gets no benefit off of its max move except for dropping speed tiers. I mean, the speed tier, like you could combo into that with something else. But now that Lash Out's a thing, now that Basharp's running around, I. 
I don't I don't trust this thing. I really don't. Uh, Alolan Executor, I'm gonna have to put it as probably a D tier pick. I just don't see it doing too much. I mean, it doesn't get chlorophyll, I believe. Let me double check that. I might be wrong. Yeah, it, it doesn't get chlorophyll, and honestly, that's the only thing that would that I can use to justify me putting regular executor in C tier. The dragon typing, it's really weak to ice because of the, you know, the dual grass dragon. Um, regular executor, it's actually pretty interesting. It's a trick room setter, however, it's also a chlorophyll abuser with sleep powder and leaf storm. It's it's a pretty solid Pokemon. Like C tier, I can justify that. Uh, yeah, far fetched to our F tier. Regular far fetched is pretty bad. I really wish it was better, but it is not. Uh, Alola Marowak, honestly, one of our better Trick Room Pokemon right now. Uh, just the sheer fact that it gets an item that doubles its attack stat is very threatening. It's essentially like it has huge power equipped. Um, and, you know, just being able to be a good Lightning Rod user next to some threatening water types like like Lapras. Sometimes you'll see uh, Marowak in a Lapras team. Uh, it's, it's a nice Pokemon. Hits very hard. And it's a decent Dynamax target if you have Trick Room up. However, regular Marowak, uh, it's going to be D tier. Doesn't really do too much. Yes, it also has the, the double attack stat benefit. Uh, however, pure ground type, it's outclassed by a couple of things. Uh, Hitmonlee, I mean, it does get in burden. And I don't know, maybe you could do some of burden weakness policy stuff. I kind of want to put it in D tier, though, just because it's, it's very frail. It's difficult to use. Um, and Max Knuckle doesn't hit too hard if you decide to Dynamax it. Same thing with Hitmonchan, however, the inner focus ability is actually pretty nice, and it's a halfway decent fighting type, so I want to put it in C tier. It can't be intimidated, it can't be flinched, it's probably pretty alright. Uh, it also is a fake out user itself, which is something to consider. Galarian Weezing, honestly, is probably super slept on right now, but I don't quite see it being B tier. I'm going to have to put it C tier. Uh, probably like a higher C tier though. Uh, just being able to set up Misty Terrain is really nice. However, if you're going to use it, you're using it for Neutralizing Gas. Neutralizing Gas is super, super good because uh, you remove abilities that can mess with a lot of strategies, especially self beat up stuff, which we will be seeing this season. Um, yeah, honestly, it's it's a nice Pokemon. Regular Weezing, while it does get Neutralizing Gas, the pure poison typing uh, kind of makes it really lame in comparison to this Weezing. So D tier. I'm not even going to rank right on because you never see it. But if I were to rank it, D tier. I don't really want to justify that. Chansey is very, very annoying. I have seen Chansey still manage to stall in a format where you can't miss moves if you Dynamax. It's a C tier, and that really upsets me. Can we please ban Chansey? Um, and it just makes tournaments take so long, dude. Like, when, when you have one match going to timer, like, no one likes that. God, we have so many Pokemon to get through. Kangaskhan, I mean, it gets, like, Inner Focus. Um, really, that's, like, the best ability on it right now. It's Inner Focus and uh, Scrappy, I guess. You probably get more out of it with Inner Focus since it's Intimidate Immune. It's a solid, bulky Pokemon. Has a pretty okay attack stat. Um, however, it's probably just going to be, like, Assault Vest Fake Out support. So, I'll put it C tier. Now, uh, <laughs> this thing's pretty bad. I want to put it F tier. The main reason the Sea King doesn't hit too hard, it's like main draw is being a water type lightning rod user so it has an electric immunity but it's not really using its special attack set it's a physical attacker so it doesn't benefit too much from it uh star me i'm gonna have to put it in d tier it could work as a fast offensive psychic type however it's once again pretty underwhelming considering your other options next up we have uh mr mime galler i'm gonna have to put it in c tier i mean i've seen a lot of Lapras running around. Screen Cleaner could be an interesting ability. Fake Out is nice. The Evil Light makes it bulkier than regular Mr. Mime. Um, it's probably like high D tier, low C tier, where regular Mr. Mime's pretty solidly D tier. It's really just there for screen support. I'm going to have to put uh, Scyther in D tier. Evil Light, Dual Wing Beat. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it hits pretty hard. Yes, it's decently bulky. However, it's just not reliable. This Pinsir, um, I mean... Let me see something. It does get Moxie. However, I don't believe it gets very many flying moves. I have to actually take a look at Pinsir. Yeah, it gets no flying moves. Because I remember in Gen 6, it had like Aerialite um, on the Mega Form. I mean, without speed boosting, 
it's not that great. It's a pure bug type. I don't think it's amazing. I'm going to have to put it in probably D tier with the rest of these things. Tauros, it does one thing. It's anchor point. Maybe you can run an intimidate set, but it's pretty bad. D tier. Gyarados, welcome to Nene tier. Hello, friend. <laughs> now, Lapras. A lot of people would argue S tier, but I'm going to have to put it A tier. Uh, I don't think it's S tier because there are a lot of ways of dealing with it. Snarling, uh, just having a decent fighting type on your team. Like, it, it gets destroyed by a lot of things. Um, even though Rillaboom's gone, it's more annoying to deal with because you can't one-shot it anymore. However, it's not really that bad to deal with. Uh, Dragon Max Eevee, F tier. Uh, Vaporeon, I mean, all of these evolutions, in my opinion, belong in D tier. Like, they don't really do anything particularly well. They're just okay. Uh, Dragon Max Norlax is a solid C tier pick. Belly Drum Trick Room in a format where we've lost probably one of our best Intimidators is really nice. However, there are going to be a couple more fighting types coming into the metagame. For example, like Urshifu. Um, so it isn't quite reliable, but it's also definitely not D tier. It's a, it's a solid C tier pick. Noctowl, well, that's a D tier. Uh, not very good at anything. Lantern, that's a D tier. Zatu, that's a D tier. Blossom, that's a D tier. We have a couple of D tiers in a row. Um, Azumarill. Now, Azumarill is actually really interesting. Huge power, belly drum, aqua jet, just assault vest attacker. It's very threatening. I want to put it in B tier just because it's it's threatening. I, I think it's a really nice Pokemon. Now that Rillaboom's gone, it's much easier to like abuse. So it's it's a nice Pokemon. Pseudo Wudo, another D tier pick, doesn't do anything particularly well. It gets Rockhead Head Smash, so shout out to Ryan Hebert popularizing the Pseudo Wudo team, I guess. <laughs> uh, Politoed, that is a solid A tier. I feel like Politoed provides a lot of support to rain teams, uh, and like it's always just been a good Pokemon. Like it's always going to be a good Pokemon. You got Hypnosis, Icy Wind, Scald, Muddy Water, it's got Helping Hand. If you're running a rain team, Politoed's your go to, man. Like, it's, it's perfect. Uh, next up, we have Quagsire. That's a D tier. <laughs> Doesn't do much. This thing is also pretty D tier. Umbreon, I'm going to go ahead and put it C tier. Snarl is really nice. Foul play is a super good move. Now that Dragapult's gone, it isn't quite as useful. However, it's definitely not D tier like the rest of the evolutions. Slowking, I can go ahead and pretty comfortably put him in probably D tier. It's just not quite as good as uh, Slowbro, in my opinion. Um... Like, yeah, they share some stats, but th this thing's more specially defensive. I feel like, or maybe, yeah, I can put it in the same in the same tier. It takes hits better from Porygon Z, which probably will let you get a Trick Room up with proper support. So that's that's okay, I guess. Dunsparce, that's a solid F tier. Uh, Steelix, that is a D tier. Quillfish, probably a D tier. Decent Intimidator. Scizor, probably a D tier. A lot of Pokemon are going to end up in D tier, so if I skip through them, my apologies. Shuckle, that is a probably a D tier pick because you can pair it up with Chansey for the guard split shenanigans. Heracross is another D tier. Cursula is another D tier. Corsola is probably F tier, actually. I just, I just don't see it doing anything. Um, Octillery, a D tier. You could get away with it. Delibird, an F tier. It can only really do hustle stuff. Mantan, a D tier. I could see a Swift Swim set. Skarmory, a D tier. Maybe something. Finally, a Pokemon that isn't mediocre. So here we have Kingdra. Now Kingdra, actually pretty solid Pokemon. I mean, it gets Hurricane. It can go for Max Airstream this generation, which is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in uh, B tier. It's, it, it feels weird putting Kingdra in B tier and Politoed in A tier, but the thing is, Kingdra kind of loses to a couple of things in this metagame. It's, it's a very threatening water type, don't get me wrong. It's probably our best Swift Swim user right now. Uh, however, it, it's, uh, it's just not as good as it was when Rillaboom was around. I think when Rillaboom was around, you had more targets for Max Airstream. Um, and it was it was really nice being able to delete their, their Dynamax with like a helping hand Max Airstream. Uh, but now, now that that's gone, it's probably just B tier. Welcome to Nene. Uh, Wobbuffet, that is F tier. Hitmontop, I'm gonna have to put as a solid B tier. It actually got way better uh, now that Togekiss is gone. Um, also, now that Incineroar is gone, like it, it has a niche as a fake out Intimidator. While Scrafty also has that, I think that him on top just purely outclasses it because it can go for Wide Guard, it can run an Assault Vest pretty effectively, um, and it has a really nice move pool. Mill Tank, D tier. Blissey, D tier. Tyranitar is a Nene. Uh, we have Light Noon, probably D tier. I mean, it just Belly Drums this gen doesn't. Or maybe, maybe they got rid of Belly Drum, I'm not certain, but. 
it's not really on my radar, so I don't know too much. I think Ludicolo is a solid uh, B tier pick right now. One of our better grass types, a Swift from Abuser. You know, not quite as good as Kingdra, but definitely not C tier. I think it's a good Pokemon. Uh, we have Shift Tree. I'm going to have to put it in C tier. It could maybe find a home on Sun Teams with a Chlorophyll set. Uh, Pelipper. I'm going to put that in C tier. Not quite as good as uh, Politoed in terms of setting up rain, but it can set up rain, which makes it decent. Also a good Tailwind user. I'm going to go ahead and put the Gardevoir in uh, D tier. Uh, we thought it would be good as like a Scarfer in Series 1 when Dragapult was around, uh, but then we found out it was bad. And now even now, now that even like Dragapult's gone, uh, it, it has like even less uses, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, you are D tier, you are D tier, you are D tier. Sableye, another pretty interesting talking point. Sableye is a uh, pretty nice support Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and put it in C tier. Uh, I can go for Fake Out, uh, I can Quash, it's uh, able to go for Foul Play, it's just got a lot of support moves, you know, Rain Dance, Sunny Day, it's, it's a decent Pokemon. Um, it's going to be one of those Pokemon you probably see with Charizard more often than not, uh, just because it's able to set up Sunny Day for it. Manectric, uh, D tier. Like, doesn't do much. <laughs> Sharpedo, another D tier. You are another D tier. And Torkoal, my boy, I loved you. But you are Nanade. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and put Flygon in C tier, mainly because it's probably more usable than before. It's a decently fast ground type. Um, it doesn't get outclassed by Dragapult anymore, which is really nice. Uh, I, I just feel like there's a lot of exploration that can happen with Flygon, so it's probably like high D tier, low C tier, but I'm leaning more towards the C tier for that. Lunatone and Solrock, their solid D tier is pretty forgettable. Whizcash, another forgettable Pokemon. Crawdon could be scary. I don't think it's quite as bad as D tier, so it's another one of those like maybe D tier, high C, or high C, I can't speak. <laughs> high D tier, low C tier Pokemon. Mawile's pretty bad, that's a D tier. Um, Claydol, another D tier Pokemon. Milotic, I'm gonna go ahead and put B tier. I feel like now that we don't have quite as many grass types, uh, and not as many electric types are really making their way onto teams. Uh, Milotic has a lot of potential to rise in usage. It's very bulky. Um, it, it, it like thrived before Rillaboom existed. So honestly, I feel like Milotic is probably just gonna start rising in usage again with that really annoying Coil Hypnosis set that I hate so much. Dusclops, that is going to be one of the few S tier Pokemon now. Oh wait, hold on, there's the Clefairy. There's the Clefairy, yeah, uh, you're A tier. Dusclops is one of the few S-tier Pokemon. It is probably our best Trick Room setter at the moment. Uh, it has Frisk, which allows you to identify items in a Dynamax format, which is ridiculous. You can see where the weakness policy is. You can see where like the Focus Sash is, where the Life Orb is. It's it's so good. Trick Room, Bulldoze to activate partner weakness policies. It gets Brick Break to remove screens from Lapras if you want to go that route. Pain Split for recovery. Will-O-Wisp to burn opponents. It's so good. I, I cannot gush enough about how good Dusclops is. I hate it. <laughs> Glalie, you are a D tier pick. Uh, Luxray, another D tier. Roserade, I, I want to put it C tier. It's a solid grass type. We've seen it, like, it, we've seen it work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put Wigglytuff in D tier. I want to put it C tier because, you know, it gets competitive, but it's not that good. This thing's D tier. Uh, Gastrodon is going to rise a bit in usage if water if water, you know, spam comes into fruition, but uh, a solid B tier pick for now. I feel like Gastron is like B tier in every format. Vespaquin is a D tier. Lopunny is a D tier. Skuntank is a D tier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Bronzong in C tier. It's a solid Trick Room setter. Hypnosis, Expanding Force, Gyro Ball. It could do some stuff. Hippowdon, the most undeserving ban. The most undeserving ban. You know, he, he deserves a row. He deserves a row. There you go. I, I'm so sad. Hippodon had no reason to be banned. It would have been solid. It would have been like a really decent Pokemon in this format. Probably the go-to Sand Setter. Uh, but now that is Gigalith because we have no other options. I mean, you could run Hippopotas if you really want to commemorate <laughs> Hippodon. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in C tier. Lucario is just okay. Uh, same to, I mean, mm, Drifloom doesn't get much it can do, but I feel like just by virtue of Tailwind and Burden, maybe you could run like Electric Seed on it. It's probably D tier though. I'm going to put it in D tier. It's probably bad. Drapion is another D tier. Um, Toxicroak, we don't see too many fairies right now. 
it is actually pretty solid versus Lapras, and I've been trying to work on that. It might be a decent Pokemon, so I'm going to put it in C tier. Um, Obama Snow, yes, it could work under Trick Room, but it's not phenomenal. Like it, We have a lot of fire types in this format, and it's weak to a lot of Pokemon. Uh, really, all it has going for it is setting up sand or setting up uh, hail. Weavile, uh, solid C tier, I think. Just fake out, like that's really all it is. Fast fake out, one of the fastest Pokemon in the format. Magnezone, another Nene that didn't deserve to get Nene'd. Uh, Rhyperior, I'm gonna go ahead and put in B tier. I feel like Rhyperior is gonna be solid. While we do have a lot of Lapras running around under Trick Room, Rhyperior is still probably one of the most threatening Pokemon in the game. I've seen Tangrowth do some stuff, Chlorophyll Sleep Powder is really scary, on top of that it does get Rage Powder, uh, so it's pretty solid. Uh, Nanade into Oblivion, goodbye Togekiss. You are D tier, uh, Leafeon is another, or yeah, I put him in the wrong tier. Leafeon's another D tier, it just doesn't do much really, it's, you know, scary under Chlorophyll I guess. Glaceon another D tier, it doesn't do much. Mamoswine, I'm gonna have to put in um, C tier, one of our better Ice types, one of our better ground types, immune to intimidate, honestly a solid Pokemon. Porygon Z, I feel weird putting this thing in S tier. I feel weird. I almost want to put it A tier because I I very rarely lose to Porygon Z teams. If you're prepared, it is, it is very, very easy to beat. If you're unprepared, you're going to lose pretty much every time. Um, for that reason, I, I think I'm going to have to put an A tier. It, it's, it's scary. Literally, max strike is the best speed control move in the game because it does way too much damage and lowers your speed and it has adaptability so it does tons tons of damage uh Gallade, c tier pick dust noir d tier pick frost last another d tier uh rotom frost a d tier rotom heat i think is actually pretty okay i'm gonna put him in c tier uh rotom mo another one that's okay you know now that we don't have very many grass types again like, it was weird. This VGC season has been a cycle of having no grass types, then having a couple of really good grass types, and then we have no grass types again. Regular Rotom, that's probably just D tier. Uh, Rotom Fan, another D tier. And Rotom Wash, I'm going to go ahead and put B tier. Nasty Pot Rotom Wash, honestly really good. I've been running Eerie Impulse in a couple of teams, and it's a super solid way of dealing with um, Porygon Z if it doesn't have redirection, or just shutting down Lapras hard. It's, it's a very nice Pokemon with Eerie Impulse on it. Stoutland. I have lost to Stoutland a few times. I will proudly put it C tier. Probably a high C tier, maybe even B tier. The best sand abuser we have at the moment. Uh, also a pretty decent Intimidate Pokemon, I guess. Liopard. Uh, it's a decent support Pokemon. You can go for Max Guard Trick Room. So that's that's alright. Um, Musharna, probably a D tier. Unpheasant, a D tier. Gigalith, I will put in B tier pretty confidently. I don't think it's quite A tier. Um, but it is our best, <laughs> it is probably our best, uh, sand setter. Um, it's a weakness policy user, trick room. It's scary, you know? Swoobat, that is a solid D tier pick. Excadrill has been nanade. Conkelder, uh, I will say Conkelder is actually not terrible. I feel like most people opt for Urshifu single strike now. Uh, however, I, I can pretty confidently put this thing into C tier, I think. Seismitoad, a pretty scary rain abuser, but not amazing. I'll put it in C tier. Throw. Hello, Throw Rogan. Um, not great. I will put you in D tier, but I want to explore this thing. It, it has a lot of bulk. It has potential for a Dynamax Pokemon, which is weird. It has, like, really, really good bulk, and I want to explore that, but it's probably not great. Uh, Sock, another D tier. Scolipede, D tier. Unfortunately, I love Scolipede. Whimsicott has been nanated into existence, or out of existence. Um, this thing, uh, probably the scariest thing to get sleep powdered by at the moment. I don't want to put it B tier, but I think it's a solid C tier pick. If we had Torkoal around, it'd probably be the new replacement for, um, Venusaur. Basculin is a D tier. Crocodile is a solid C tier. It's an Intimidator. Good ground type. Could see it putting work in. Galarian Darmanitan, honestly really scary. Um, we don't have very many checks to it anymore, and it has a good speed tier now that we've lost, like, Dragapult and stuff. And, like, like, there are almost no Pokemon above 100 right now. So, like, this thing is scary. I'm very scared of it. Regular Darmanitan. Uh, probably about the same. Hits like a truck, but very frail. Maractus is a solid D tier pick. Uh, Crustle is a D tier. Scrafty, I'm going to go ahead and put in C tier. Intimidate, Fake Out. 
Uh, really, really bulky. Good assault vest user. Could make it work. This thing is D tier. This thing is D tier. Uh, Max Malador just isn't amazing. You're still in D tier, unfortunately. I wish that Max Garbodor could be used effectively. Like it's it's not great. Maybe if you ran like weakness policy and then like a hex user in the back, it could be all right. But I just don't see it working too well. This is another D tier pick. This is another D tier pick. Gothitelle. Uh, Goth Ant is making a comeback, and I don't like that. I want to put Gothitelle in B tier, but I also kind of want to put it in C tier. I'm going to go ahead and put it in B tier just because it's a trapper. Trapping Pokemon are always scary, uh, and it has Fake Out now, which is awesome. It's a Trick Room setter too. Reuniclus, probably a solid C tier pick. Um, it's able to mask a Life Orb by having Magic Guard, which means it takes no Life Orb damage uh, while still getting all the benefits of it. It can also run Overcoat to ignore Amoongus Spore, which is really nice, and uh, Rage Powder. Vanillix, uh, just put it in D tier, it's not great. This thing is D tier. A Scavalier, I'm gonna put it in C tier. Uh, it's really bulky, it's a halfway decent Dynamax option, and on top of that, um, it's, you know, it hits like a truck. Moxie boosted, why are you tired and sweaty and wearing a different outfit? I, I just randomly said, hey, you know what? I, well, I mean, the last recording got interrupted by me having to go to a Zoom lecture, uh, and then I decided to go for a run. <laughs> So here we are. We're continuing on with the tier list. Uh, we left off with probably some garbage. Uh, actually, I think it was literally Garbodor. So yeah, garbage. I'm probably wrong. No, it was Amolga. So next up we have Amoongus. Now Amoongus is actually probably the... It, it's strange because while you do want the value when it comes to redirection, uh, the regenerator recovery, and uh, just like the defensive prowess it has, like it's able to do a lot of things, put things to sleep, but it's super nice. Um, I think it belongs in A tier, but it's strange because you don't see it on as many teams as you'd expect because they already have a grass type and one of the last things you want to be is overly max airstream weak. Uh, I learned that the hard way on my Kamoa team. Next up we have Jellicent. Um, solid Pokemon. I can see it in C tier. Just a good Trick Room setter. It's able to go for Scald, Muddy Water, I believe, Will-O-Wisp. Uh, just a generally nice Pokemon. I believe it also got Strength Sap this generation, which is really cool. Galvangela, solid D tier. Ferrothorn, honestly, I, I want to put it C tier, but it's probably B tier. We lost the two best fire types in the format, uh, so I think, I think it's a solid B tier. It's definitely... Uh, able to find its place in a lot of teams, and it's able to eat hits from Lapras, which is really nice. Iron Defense Body Press sets have picked up in usage, which is cool, uh, so I think it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put Kling Kling in D tier. Uh, Behem is another D tier. Chandelure, uh, solid C tier Pokemon, able to imprison Will-O-Wisp, Heat Wave, um, Trick Room if it wants to, uh, but it's mostly an anti-Trick Room Pokemon. Haxorus is probably a D tier. It's just not able to do too much. Maybe if it got like Max Airstream or... Uh, yeah, I don't believe it gets Max Airstream. Let me double check here. I always have to double check. Whenever I say something doesn't get Max Airstream, I'm usually wrong. Uh, flying. Yeah, it gets nothing. So it's it's honestly kind of garbage. <laughs> I mean, you can make it work with like Tailwind support or maybe a Max Airstream user next to it, but it's it's not amazing. A couple more D tiers here. I don't see them doing too much. Uh, yeah, you are F tier. One of the few F tiers. Next up, uh, Mian Xiao. Actually, I've seen Mian Xiao do a couple of really cool things. Inner Focus Coaching is really cool. Um, it's a solid Pokemon. It lost the ability to be intimidated, which is awesome. I think it's a solid pick. Uh, C tier. Drodagon, another D tier. Golurk, another D tier. Bisharp, I'm going to go ahead and put this one. I want to put it in C tier. Um, I'm a big fan of it. However, I won't lie. It's not the greatest Pokemon. It's able to get intimidate boosts from things like uh, Hitmontop and... Uh, Arcanine, uh, however, like, you know, Defiant Intimidate Boost, like, it, it, while it gets those, it's also weak to both of those Pokemon, and sometimes slower, uh, so it's it's probably like C tier. It, it's pretty nice versus the Porygon Z, though. Porygon Z gets absolutely destroyed by plus two Lash Out. Um, yeah, it's 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 really cool. Uh, Bufalant, another D tier pick. Uh, Braviary, honestly, I want to put it in C tier as well. Uh, it's another Pokemon with Intimidate, uh, Max Airstream, <laughs> or it's another Pokemon with, um, Defiant that benefits from Intimidate. Max Airstream is really powerful coming off of this thing, so I like it a lot. Mandibuzz, uh, another C tier. I think it's pretty good. Or actually, you know, I, I can put Braviary in B tier. I think it's B tier. Mandibuzz is C tier. Uh, defensive Pokemon, eats a lot of hits. 
tailwinds, general things, you know. Uh, Heatmore is a D tier. I am gonna go ahead and put Durant in, um, I wanna put it A tier because Durant is really, really scary again. However, I, I think it's probably like top of B tier, if anything. It's kind of top of B tier. I'm going to put an A tier because I know some people are going to be real upset if I don't put an A tier. It's sort of Porygon Z syndrome where it's like really, really threatening as a Dynamax. Then outside of Dynamax, it's like, eh, it's okay. Um, next up, we have Hydreigon. I would say a C tier Pokemon. While it's like while it functions better without fairy types around, um, like it's it's still not. It, like without as many fairy types around, it's it's still not ideal in the meta game where you see a lot of uh, Porygon Z and um, G Max Lapras running around. Uh, Volcarona, I'm gonna put as a B tier Pokemon. I think it functions really well as a support Pokemon right now. Rage Powder, Safeguard, Heat Wave, Struggle Bug, uh, String Shot. <laughs> it has a lot of cool tools, so I think it's a solid B tier. Cobalion. I'm going to go ahead and put that in B tier as well, along with Terrakion. We haven't seen too much Terrak. It's mostly been Cobalion, uh, but I think they're about equal. Uh, next up, Virizion. That one's going to be sort of a C tier. I think it's okay. I mean, it's probably got the best matchup versus Lapras out of any of them, uh, because its max move is stronger in that it doesn't have to click max knuckle. It can click max overgrowth, uh, but it's still not phenomenal. You know, overall, it's kind of lame. Uh, next up, we have Diggersby. I think Diggersby, Diggersby is pretty okay. Uh, a C tier pick, if anything. Probably not great, but with the lack of ground types we have, it's it's sitting pretty comfortably in C tier. Talonflame is a B tier, in my opinion. I think Talonflame is actually really, really cool this generation and in this format. Uh, Priority Gale Wings is amazing next to Porygon Z and uh, even uh, this <laughs> even um, this uh, Durant here, because the Tailwind just really benefits them. On top of that, it gets Quick Guard, Taunt, a couple other really cool tools. Pangoro is going to be a D tier. This Meowstic is going to be a D tier, where the other Meowstic is going to sit solidly in C tier, since this one gets Prankster. Uh, it's able to go for like Prankster Sunny Day, Thunder Wave, a lot of cool stuff. Um, Aegislash, I want to put it D tier, but I think it's probably C tier, despite the fact it's not an amazing Dynamax candidate. I think Aromatisse is actually really cool. Uh, it's not able to be taunted, and with safety goggles, it can't be put to sleep, so it's actually one of the most reliable Trick Room setters, funny enough. It, I just wish it wasn't so weak in general. Uh, Slurpuff's going to be a D-tier pick. Malamar is going to be a D-tier pick. Barbarical's a D-tier pick. Uh, Dragalge, solid C-tier. Uh, one of those bulldoze weakness policy Pokemon that are really threatening as a Dynamax. Uh, Clawitzer, probably C tier, almost D tier. It's pretty scary under Trick Room, but besides that, it's pretty garbage. Uh, Helisk, another D tier. I think uh, one of the Pokemon that benefited the most from the bans is probably going to be uh, Sylveon. It's it's really scary. I mean, Hyper Voice hits like a truck. Um, there aren't as many things that can one shot it now that Excadrill and Tyranitar are gone, uh, and it just has a generally okay matchup versus most things in the meta. Like granted. Like, it doesn't hit a lot of things in A tier very hard, but under Trick Room, this thing's generally scary. On top of that, sometimes they tend to run Yawn. Uh, Halucha, I'd say a C tier Pokemon. Can't really justify that with anything in particular except for unburdened weakness policy stuff, and just the fact that it's a solid max Airstream user. Um, Dedenne, probably D tier. Gudra, I'm gonna go ahead and put in B tier. It got a lot better. Um, now that Comfey is around, Comfey, Gudra, Lapras is one of the most annoying teams to deal with, especially with ally switch shenanigans, because uh, Gudra tends to run like a Salt Vest Sap Sepper. <laughs> Assault Vest Sap Sepper, I just managed to mix up like three words there. Uh, but basically, it benefits from priority Giga Drain, which will give it plus one attack, and it's very difficult to knock out. Klefki is going to be a C tier pick, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's really good for screen support Thunder Wave, uh, however, overall, probably not as good as like the B tier mons. Next up we have Trevenant, uh, I would say D tier, just like a general Trick Room Pokemon. Uh, same with Gorgast, it's just okay. Avalug's another D tier. Uh, Noivern, probably another D tier, not amazing. Uh, <laughs> I really hate putting this thing in D tier. I like Decidueye, I just wish it was better. Um, Incineroar, another Nene Pokemon. Welcome to the Nene list. Uh, and Primarina, really good, really good. I wanna put it in B tier. It's uh, one of the hardest hitting water types we have, you know, except for all the other ones. <laughs> but right off the bat, like, it's a nice max candidate. Uh, it's able to eat hits from Lapras pretty well. Uh, max Starfall is really powerful. Max Geyser coming off a of Hydro Cannon is never something anything wants to switch into. So yeah, it's, it's a great Pokemon. Vikavolt, I'm going to go ahead and put in C tier. Just a Trick Room Pokemon. Pretty okay. Rubombi, 
Um, probably C tier, it can only really go for like speed swap strats and a couple of other things. It can prevent sleep with Sweet Veil, which is okay. These boys are all D tier, which makes me very, very sad. I really hate that like so many Pokemon are D tier. Mudsdale is probably a C tier. Um, you know, inability to be intimidated, self swagger shenanigans, very bulky, a pretty great Dynamax candidate. Uh, I think it's a great Pokemon. I like it a lot. Araquanid, another C tier. Um, it's good under Trick Room. It's an okay Dynamax candidate. It hits like a truck because it has double power and all of its water moves. Uh, but beyond that, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's a strong Trick Room Pokemon. Maybe if people try to run like a weakness policy set, it would be doing a lot more damage. However, with the existence of things like, um, you know, like all the water types that are coming back, uh, I'm not sure Araquanid is really your first pick. Lorantis, I really hate putting you in like D tier, but ever since Dynamax became a thing, you can't max Knuckle effectively, and that's hilarious. However, uh, with the contrary stuff, it could be okay. Um, I just don't think it's, it's like the highest D tier in my opinion, lowest C tier. Yeah, I, I mean, like it does get special defense boosts from Max Darkness, defense boosts from Max Dragon, but it's just overall pretty underwhelming. Uh, Shinotic is going to be a D tier, this thing's going to be D tier. But where's another D tier? Zarina, interesting Pokemon. I'm gonna go ahead and put a B tier. With uh, the lack of Psychic Train, Fake Out is really huge. Other priority moves are coming back. Uh, this thing is an amazing Assault Vest user. It hits like a truck with uh, Power Whip or Trap Kick. High Jump Kick's an amazing move to turn into Max Knuckle. It can max Airstream with Bounce if you feel like it. It has great coverage all, all around. Um, it's just a great Pokemon. I think it's a solid B tier and one of the best Grass types we have at our disposal. Next up we have Comfey, another B tier in my opinion. Uh, it's amazing next to Lapras and Gudra. I can Trick Room, I can Ally Switch, it has priority healing moves. Overall, phenomenal Pokemon in this format, but only really functions well on that specific team archetype. Next up, Oranguru. I'm gonna have to put you in D tier, maybe C tier. I mean, you're a solid Trick Room Pokemon, but compared to all the others, you're kinda lame. Passimian, I could see it getting away with a couple of things. C tier, you know, Defiant Pokemon. It's pretty hard to put them much lower than, than uh, C tier. Glycepod, I I miss you, Glycepod, man. I wish you were better. D tier. Like, it's an awful Dynamax candidate because you have to <laughs> you have to be careful with uh, Emergency Exit forcing you out. Palisand, um, I think it's probably C tier. I've seen, you know, the self weakness policy shenanigans. It, it could work, you know. It only has one thing it can do, though. This thing is probably F tier. Doesn't do much. So Valley, another D tier. Turtonator, D tier. Togedemaru, I'm going to put it as a C tier. It's another Lightning Rod user. Steel type, Spiky Shield, Fake Out, uh, Nuzzle. It's got a couple of things going for it. It's a nice Pokemon. Mimikyu, uh, this thing is actually Nainade, I believe, because it was top 10 in singles. Forgive me if I put anything that was Nainade from singles. I think I haven't yet, but if I have, forgive me. <laughs> uh, for some reason, they decided to ban singles Pokemon from VGC. But yeah, Mimikyu is Nainade. Uh, Drampa, another D tier pick, not amazing. Uh, I think this thing is actually pretty okay. Delmise is a really nice grass type with Steel Stab because of its ability. I think it's a solid C tier. Kamo is going to be another C tier for me. I think, like, in, in the previous format, I was probably like a D tier. However, with the lack of fairy types, um, Kamo is able to more safely be a pretty decent Dynamax option, whether you go for like Dragon Dance. Uh, or Clangor's Soul. Like, it has a couple of decent options now, and I'm a big fan of it. Melmetal does not exist. <laughs> Rillaboom has been Nainade. Welcome to the Nene list. Cinderace has been Nainade. Now, Inteleon. Uh, actually a pretty solid Pokemon. I'm gonna go ahead and put it C tier. I think it can function pretty well. Its speed tier is now incredible. 120 base speed is really high for the format, uh, since, you know, we don't have Tapu Koko in this game. Um, Dragapult just got yeeted from existence. I think the only faster water type is Barraskewta, which is only okay. Uh, and the, you know, the 160 base power move that ignores abilities, it's the only one left, because we lost the other two, so uh, I think it's a pretty solid Pokemon. Greedent, D tier. Uh, Corviknight, I mean, no one uses G-Max Corviknight, so I'll rank regular Corviknight. I think it's probably a B tier. I think it's pretty okay. Uh, it's able to do a lot this this format. It uh, doesn't get hit very hard by a lot of things. Like, you have to be careful with rain teams if they're, you know, boosted. Uh, you have to be careful with Marowak. You have to be careful with Charizard. You can get burned by a couple of things. But overall, Corviknight's actually gotten a lot better uh, ever since um, ever since we lost, like, the major threats, like... Um, Cinderace. I can remember the name for some reason. 
Uh, Orbital is pretty garbage. I'm going to go ahead and put it D tier. Feevil, you make me sad, man. You make me sad. You're a D tier now. I would have put it in C tier previously because it could work with Ndidi, but Ndidi's gone, so Feevil's effectively gone, which makes me sad. Um, I forget your name because you haven't really been used since that beat up Dragapult strat, but it's pretty garbage. <laughs> it's going to be another uh, C tier Pokemon or a D tier Pokemon. Uh, this thing is pretty bad. I kind of want to put it F tier because it really only does Iron Defense Body Press and beyond, or Cotton Guard Body Press. And beyond that, it's pretty garbage. Like its move pool is so low. If they gave it just a couple more moves, it might be viable, but nah, nah, they, they just had to ruin it. Uh, Dreadnought, no one really uses G-Max Dreadnought. Regular Dreadnought, I'm going to go ahead and put as a solid C tier. And the main reason is because it actually has a really nice matchup versus, um, versus Lapras. A helping handed max rock fall off of rock slide is actually a guaranteed one hit KO if you're running life orb. So uh, if you run like Politoed and that thing, it's a really nice way of countering Lapras. Boltund, we haven't really seen much of it, but I think it's probably a C tier right now considering it just got competitive. Colossal, GMAX Colossal is actually really threatening. Uh, I want to put it high C tier, low B tier. Uh, we have a couple of things that deal with it pretty well. I mean, like, we're going to see a lot more Azumarill, a lot more Ludicolo, a lot more Kingdra couple of things um i'm gonna go ahead and put a b tier i don't think it's great but it's 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 like a really really good pokemon you know next up uh gigantamax flapple flapple is pretty okay c tier pokemon it's really just good with tailwind i suppose uh gigantamax appleton i am gonna have to put you in d tier because you're not really great you only you're pretty much just big appleton you have nothing that really makes you stand out in fact i think regular dynamax appleton might be better <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Uh, Sandaconda, kind of contending for one of the better ground type slots. I think it's going to be a C tier. And just the max move, like trapping everything, is pretty cool. I've had success with that in the past, and I think it's a pretty solid Pokemon. Uh, Cramorant, another D tier. Pretty lame. Barrascuta, I'm going to go ahead and put it in C tier. It's pretty scary. It's a really fast Pokemon. Hits like a truck, too. Um, just, I don't think it's a great Dynamax option because it's so frail. Uh, like a regular Pokemon could knock it out. G-Max Toxtricity, ironically better before the bans because he was able to hit Rillaboom and switch in on it. I'm going to go ahead and put it C tier. I feel that it could have been B tier if Rillaboom was still present, but a lot of things wouldn't be B tier then. So uh, I haven't seen much of Senna Scorch. I feel like it's somewhat okay, but I can't trust my gut there because we haven't seen much of it. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in D tier where it had been before because not, really not a lot of people are really experimenting with it. This thing's D tier. Um... G-Max Hatterene, very scary. Uh, one of the better Trick Room setters. I'm going to go ahead and put it B tier. The confusion is super annoying, and the inability to be taunted is so lame. No one really uses G-Max Grimmsnarl, so we'll go ahead and rank regular Grimmsnarl. I think it's a solid Pokemon. I will put it in B tier. Screen support, Thunder Wave. Uh, it got a lot better ever since uh, Togetic, or Togekiss got banned, since it can't crit through it anymore. Obstagoon might be better now that like the speed tier has got a little bit lower. I'm going to go ahead and throw it C tier to be safe. Uh, basically... Uh, ever since we lost Toekiss, like, nothing really is... Like, it, it couldn't one-shot Toekiss, barring, like, a uh, Defiant boosted Max Strike. Uh, and now that Toekiss is gone, it, it's probably a lot better. I don't want to rank it in B tier, though, because we haven't really seen what it can do. I think if uh, people experimented uh, experimented with Obstagoon, it could be actually pretty decent. Next up, we have... Where'd I go? Poltegeist. Garbage. I wish you were better. <laughs> uh, Indeedee, you have been nay and unceremoniously like this thing did not deserve to be banned indeedee male was perfectly fine we could have lost indeedee female and no one would have complained as long as indeedee male existed but these two come as a pair they're a package deal and it makes me sad berserker another uh d tier pokemon cursula another d tier surfetched uh, pretty solidly d tier it could be better uh, i mean max airstream is really scary i could possibly make a case for c tier but not many people are running it uh and it doesn't seem to have too much potential mr rhyme another d tier mon Runeragus, um, another D tier, it's just okay. G-Max Alchemy, D tier. Pretty underwhelming. Phalanx, I, there are better Defiant Pokemon, is what makes me sad. Like, Passimian outclasses it, which is really annoying. Um, I wish it was better. Like, it's, the only thing setting it apart from other Pokemon is, like, the ability to use No Retreat, which isn't really ideal. Pinkurchin made big ups, big ups. It is a solid C tier possible B tier. When you pair it with a Lolan Raichu, it's really scary. Uh, I think it's a nice Pokemon. Next up, we have Frostmoth, another D tier, very underwhelming, very rock weak. Stonejinner, very underwhelming, dies to any special hit. 
Uh, power spot's interesting, but it's not really great. Ice Q, another interesting gimmick, but not great. Um, I think I found it really interesting when people were using this Pokemon. I forget the name of it. It's the Marnie Pokemon, the Marnie Chipmunk. I'm going to go and put it in C tier, just because the speed tier got a lot better. It has Fake Out. Aura Wheel boosting your speed is really scary, and I think it's a pretty alright Pokemon, actually. Um, Caparaja, I think it is a solid D or C tier. I can make a case for C tier, I think. Um, but it lost a lot of targets recently with Togekiss being gone, so I think it's going to be D tier. Next up, we have Dragazolt. Probably the biggest glow up we've seen. This thing is very solidly uh, A tier. Now, Dragazolt is another one of those scary um, Dynamax Tailwind Pokemon, uh, but this thing being able to max Airstream is super, super threatening, and it's just a very powerful Pokemon that you should really keep an eye on. Arctazolt, D tier. Give this thing. Give these two Slush Rush, and then maybe we'll talk. Dracovish is going to be, I think, a solid... Not as good, actually, now that Rillaboom's gone, but I think it's a solid B tier still. Very threatening Pokemon, able to one-shot a lot of things with proper speed control. I think it's going to be very scary this, this season. Next up, we have Duraludon. We'll rank regular Duraludon since it outclasses its G-Max. Another B tier pick. Dragon Steel with Assault Vest. Uh, it's able to do a lot of things. Max Lightning protects it from... Uh, Amoongus, which could honestly mess it up pretty bad. Uh, Stalwart is really good because it it, it just ignores um, redirection, uh, which is really solid versus a couple of things on this tier list. So I like it a lot. I'm a big fan of uh, Duraldon. If Whimsicott was still around, Duraldon would be pretty much a top threat in my opinion. Dragapult has been nanade. Honestly, G-Max Urshifu, like the dark type, probably A tier, maybe S tier. Just, it got so much better with Tokus being banned, because it doesn't get one-shot by the most common Pokemon in the format anymore. Max Knuckle is really cool. Uh, people are running Focus Sash on it, sometimes Life Orb. Uh, and just being able to like go for a Max Knuckle or a, a Max One Blow and hit something really, really hard is super great. Uh, Wicked Blow into Sucker Punch is like guaranteed pretty much to take a KO every game. So it's a great Pokemon. I like it a lot. And being able to get around Protects is super cool. Uh, regular, or the uh, the water type Urshifu, I think is just below it. I think it's going to be B tier. It's okay. Same sort of thing going on, except uh, I don't think it's as in demand as it was before because uh, we have so many good water types now. Really, once Rillaboom went away, the water types came back. They went on hibernation for a while. Uh, Riolu getting coaching is kind of lame. I'm going to go ahead and put it in C tier. I don't think it's amazing, but it could definitely pull a couple of tricks off, like uh, copycat trick room into coaching stuff. It could be really cool. And Togetic, I mean, it's probably C tier just because of redirection, but I think you have better options with Clefairy up there. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much everything I can rank. I believe, yeah, I believe that's everything I can rank here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Uh, what do you think about all these Pokemon? Like overall, I think I hit, I, th I think I hit the nail right on the head. Uh, the C tiers are questionable. D tiers are I think solid, like I, I think I got all the D tiers in there in the right spot. F tier, pretty hard to argue against those. Nay Nay is just a matter of fact and rip. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. I really wish we could keep hip hot on, but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Join the Discord, uh, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, do whatever. Uh, I go live at 10 p.m. tonight on Twitch, so if you guys want to hang out, I'll be over there. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call guys. Have a nice night, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.